let's get into a little Q and A. Dot 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 dot. Let's get out of these banners. There we are. So. <laughs> stupid it works like this but rob is correct i don't make the rules i just report the rules and i'm just a realist i don't know what's going to happen i just kind of just go is the fed going to keep raising rates should they i don't really it's not the question of should they raise rates they will raise rates and we already know they are they're already signaling they're going to do that uh so it's not like what they should or shouldn't do it's what are they going to do and how does that affect my portfolio and that's what i give to you guys and um, you know what's great about you guys is because since we're in the bear market, like all the tourists are gone and all the people who really understand the investing are here. So I don't get the stupid questions. Sorry, it's just true. I mean, if you're here now, you're pretty, you're bright enough to understand that uh, this is a long game, not a short game. Yes, crypto golfer, it is. But I appreciate you, I do, trust me. Any thoughts on Algo and its future? If Algo is done or good to continue to accumulate during these low prices, I gotta tell you, there's a, there's a company there's a group that is really into uh, Algorand, and uh, that is Anthony Scaramucci and Skybridge. Uh, they put a quarter of a billion dollars into Algorand. And when he was on the show, he talked to us about, he said, the reason we did that is because we did our due diligence. We took a look at uh, the project, the team behind the project and where things were going, and we have high conviction that's gonna do very well. So take it for what it's worth. Um, I own a little Algorand, but I'm not presently accumulating right now but uh, I do still have some. <laughs> That's a good point. Eastern Digital says BlackRock decided Bitcoin needed to drop. Look, uh, BlackRock's offering that to their institutional clients. Wouldn't it be smart and wise to drop this as much as possible so they can get in as low as possible? And then in a couple of years, they can say, we told you. We told you, look at that. This is the best performing asset anything that we've actually offered. It is now 2025 and... Uh, we just killed it. So you're welcome clients, keep coming back. And that's, that only happens if you can push Bitcoin down as much as you possibly can. Because I, I, I think I know where I'm going. <laughs> I don't know, that's funny. Hydro Wales Mining Club, sounds good. Uh, the Pope and Hillary Clinton hiding in bunkers. I'm not sure if that's correct. I cannot verify that. Best friends here. <laughs> Beardy, the, 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 the lone EOS investor. Uh, see, see, see. The Vatican called an all fund 30 September. Huh. You're welcome, meme. Appreciate it. Bullish on debtors prison geo group. Is that the one that Burry invested into? That guy's been predicting the end of the world for 10 years straight after he got it right in 2008. You know he's been wrong before. That guy's not, that guy's not 100% perfect. Actually, there was a video we did. We talked about the 10 times he was wrong. And he'll even admit it. But uh, sure. Uh, let's see what else. Are there any ETH pools? I don't run one. Uh, I don't really like. No, I got to tell you, as far as like staking, Cardano knocked it out of the park. They did. You got to admit. Uh, there's no lockup periods and there's no slashing. You control your private keys. It stays in your wallet. You can stake and unstake at any time. And uh, ratio is between 4 and 6%. Oh, and by the way, I've got a couple, or we've got a couple of stake pools. You can find that link in the description. And um, doing pretty good, just trucking along. We've been up now for a year and a half, no issues whatsoever. And we're turning between, eh, four, the industry average is 4 to 6% since we've been around for long. I think we're like at 4.58% uh, of what do they call it? Return on ADA, ROA. Not bad. Let's see. What's this? First close group, it looks like a proof of work fork is gonna happen also. If so, we all get free money for the airdrop. Wonder how that'd work. I wonder how that'd work. <laughs> Robert, start your pants, sell your house, sell your kidneys, sell your kids and buy a Bitcoin. Easy, dollar cost average. Make it safe, not financial advice. I've gone down that road before where I put a little bit too much too fast and I missed a lot of opportunities. So, yeah, and see, this is the thing that, that concerns me. This right here. Remember, Tasia, Rob, we already shut off our miners in the Netherlands with the power costs going 4X and growing. Look, over on Twitter, I'm pretty active over there and I ask the, the same questions to all uh, 
Europeans and people around the world, Australians, I'm like, what is the, the cost of power? Is it going up, stagnant, or going down? And every single person, every single person gives me some pretty scary numbers. 4X, 6X, 8X, and more. There's some people who have businesses that are like, I have to shut down. I can't even keep it up because electricity costs are so high. Even here in Texas, where essentially uh, electricity has been pretty cheap for quite some time, uh, my saw that my or our uh, electricity bill, it's it went up about at least another 50%. So there's uh, some rumblings going on. And then Puerto Rico, the houses over there, that went up dramatically. But that's just the ecosystem in, uh, in Puerto Rico. So when I see stories like this or comments like this, like how can these Bitcoin miners stay on? So they're going to have to stay off. They're going to have to sell because they're going to have to cover their, just their overhead costs, right? Just to, just to own, not own, but to rent out those facilities. And then that will, unfortunately, this is what I think will happen. Difficulty mining will go down. Then that'll lead to more place, more people or more mining operations to actually say, okay, well, we have cheaper power in the United States or in other pl places, like I don't know where uh, they have cheaper power and they're going to start to rule the roost. And then all of a sudden the ones that uh, they just can't stay open for forever. So then those people will go up and then then like uh, Ben Marteja will say, okay, now whenever the, the cost of electricity goes down, now we can turn it on. But the other guys will be so far ahead because they're able to mine it. I don't know. Uh, I just, I, I just see a, I just see a problem with with energy, a big problem with energy. <laughs> crypto world says, merge will goon kill the entire crypto world. I cannot confirm or deny that. Uh, yeah, some good news. Yeah, I got away from that for a while. I was doing a lot of negative stuff. So from now on, I'm trying to balance everything out because. There's always good news and bad news. And I've been really focusing on the bad news because I get a little tunnel visioned. But uh, there's good news out there. And I got to tell you, between us, just between the 1,500 people that are here, um, when I say that the bear market is for building, there are so many projects, good projects, that are reaching out and uh, talking about, okay, we're doing this, we're doing that. Would you like to come on? Would you like to do this? I am more busy now uh, about what's going on and there's some, like I said, it's not new products. It's like existing products that are really big. I'm more busy now than I was in the bull market because the, the products that actually have things behind them are making a lot of strides. I'm doing a lot of things. And of course, these types of shows is where I can get those, get that information out. And uh, that's what's up. I'm telling you, I, I think this next bull run is going to be pretty good. I'm not going to give you price predictions. I've learned my mistake the hard way on that one. And that's it. Ah, Mutawe, Ajabu, Matavu. I think I nailed that. Buy the rumor, sell the news. ETH merger will pump and dump in short term. I, I, can't, uh, I can't fault him for that logic. That does sound pretty true. Whew. Well, that's not good. Uh, Jang and Chow, always good comments. Did the miners sell their Bitcoin reserve to pay off their bills? Heard some are six months backed up. If gas and electricity increase and winter comes, won't more minor companies declare bankruptcy 10 kilos Bitcoin? Well, you have to remember. So what do, what do Bitcoin miners do? Well, they secure the network. They're actually able to mine the Bitcoin. But remember, uh, for the difficulty, the, the difficulty rate actually goes down when there's less Bitcoin miners. So the ones that are actually keeping up, like I, can, I can't guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, the mining operation over there at Binance, they're probably pretty liquid. And some of the bigger ones, numbers one, two, and three, or maybe one of them fails. What does that mean? Well, then they shut down all their miners and they have to sell off their miners. Does that affect uh, the Bitcoin price per se? Not in the long term, but I think in the short term, what's going to happen, of course, the difficulty rate goes down. That's the beauty of it. And then, of course, the other Bitcoin miners uh, just fill in, the, fill in the gaps. Tell me where I'm incorrect. Anybody who mines Bitcoin, I've been wrong before. <laughs> so that's just how I see it. Again, if you mine Bitcoin, correct me. Uh, good question. Simran, Rob, is this a good time to keep adding positions to Bitcoin ETH? And if so, what are your price targets for Bitcoin ETH by 2025-ish? You're playing with fire, Simran, by asking me those questions. Uh, remember, I was the one who told you that Bitcoin was going to, or I thought Bitcoin was going to 150K in 2021. Did that happen? No. I thought that Ethereum was going to go to 10K. Did that happen? No. I thought 
Voyager, the VGX hub was even like 30 bucks. That happened? Not even close. Went to seven bucks from 29 cents, but whatever. So I'm not going to do these anymore and say where the price is going. I have no care in the world. Quite honestly, I know it'll probably go up from here in 2025 in three years. And that's really what I care about. So the, to answer your question, is this a good time to keep adding positions to Bitcoin ETH? Well, I got to tell you, man, if we take a look at some metrics, first of all, the Puel multiple is telling us yes. But not only that, if we take a look at, where's the MVRV there? If we take a look at MVRV score, this again is the same thing. Where's a good time to accumulate? Well, when it's in this green area, we're pretty fairly close to that. Does that mean we can't go lower than this? That's not what I'm saying. In actuality, let me show you this. We could go lower. We could go lower below the, the negative 0.4 mark, which, let me blow this up. This doesn't make any sense unless I show you. See this dip right here? This is below the actual green accumulation phase. This has only happened three times. It happened in 2018, remember this? When the market, oh, I can't be right. Let me go back. 2018, well, the market cap, oh, that's so low. Negative 0.4 in 2018. It happened uh, also in 2015 when we marked the bottom. And it also happened in 2011 when we marked the bottom. It still hasn't happened over here. So do I think it's a good time to, to accumulate? For me, yes. Uh, but remember, I still think we can go a little lower. So what I do is I don't dump uh, a bunch of money all the way in. I just continue to dollar cost average but it's uh, less of a percentage, about 25%, 15 to 25% of what I usually do. And what I'm waiting for is you can do what's called dynamic DCAing. So I guess I should probably show you what I'm talking about. So as this starts to go down even lower, where are we? We're at negative 0.12. Once it goes to negative 0.2, I'll probably put about, instead of 15 to 25%, probably about 50% of what I used to do. And then when it goes down to negative 0.4, it'll be 100% of what I do. And when it goes down below 0.4, it'll be about 200% of what I usually dollar cost average pr previously. So that's how I plan to play uh, this game. And then lastly, DCA will only tell you how to buy our dollar cost average in these things. Uh, it'll, it's, it's great to buy the dips and keep dollar cost averaging all that rah rah stuff and, you know, diamond hands if you believe in that. But, uh, it doesn't, there's not a good way for you to say, well, when should I sell? Well, actually it does for the MVRV score. You know, we take a look in here, might be a good idea to, to, uh, to start to sell off, sell off maybe around, how much was this? Oh, this is when Bitcoin's like, what was this? March 4th? That was when it was almost at over 60,000. And over here was 20,000. And over here, gee, my Christmas, look at that. That was just way too high. So there's something like that, but I'm looking at a couple of things, the MVR VZ score, Po multiple, and of course, the good old fashioned Pi cycle top. And if you want to find out, like when, once the Pi cycle top hits, for me, I'm going to be about 80% out. And people might say, that's crazy. Well, if I would have done that last time, I would have sold at around 60,000 per Bitcoin. Uh, Luna would have been a really great sell at that same point. And Ethereum would have been around 4,000. So will I time the exact top? Nope, don't care. Just want to get it somewhat right. So that's it. I hope I answered your question. It was a long-winded question, Rob. That's right. That's what I do here. I try my best. <laughs> try to pronounce somebody's name, and then I always say the same thing. Nailed it, even though when, usually I don't. It's a great question. Christopher Dahlstrom says, is this good for Celsius mining difficulty decreases? Yes, it does. So if you think about this, correct me if I'm wrong, miners, but as miners start to turn off their rigs, then the, difficult, the difficulty mining uh, for Bitcoin drops precipitously, depending on how many actually fall off. And that means that the ones that can actually afford to fire up those those rigs and pay for electricity are going to mine more Bitcoin. And that's good for them. Now, there's a big thing that I will say about Celsius mining, and that is this. I don't see them as being uh, profitable, profitable for uh, a bit of time. Uh, the cost of Bitcoin will have to actually 
either drop so they can get into a good point and then actually raise up because just chopping sideways, I don't think it's going to be a good thing. And you can, uh, I'm not the expert. You know who's an expert on this one? Um, well, Simon Dixon. Uh, just listen to him. And then uh, who's the guy? They're a minor YouTuber. I forgot his name. But just listen to them. I'm not the guy to tell you all about Bitcoin mining. Joe, <laughs> Jay and Chow. Do you think the four-year chart are outdated and that every cycle it comes shorter and shorter to the point where it will be three years instead for bear and bull market? So, look, there was this other thing about, remember this thing called extended market theory, extended cycle theory? I bought into that too. And, uh, I mean, that was from Ben into the Cryptoverse. Super smart guy, great guy. Can't say anything negative about him. Awesome. He's on the show every so often. But uh, even he was like, yeah, that didn't work out. So, to say now that it becomes shorter, you could say that, I guess, because the last time we hit a top was December 2017, correct? And then we hit a top again when? November 2021, right? 67,000, correct me in the comments. So you can say it's by a month or so, that's okay. I don't really care so much about that. If it's by a month or a couple months, I'm all right. It still keeps me intact with the four year cycle. And I think that Everybody's calling for a recession, so maybe it will, maybe it won't be. That's 2023. That's chop sideways, boring accumulation phase. 2024, maybe see some little action and uh, still accumulate. And of course, that is when there's a Bitcoin uh, halving. And then what happens if there's a Bitcoin halving? Well, so far, it's an all-time high. If that happens in October, I won't fault anybody for that. So it's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Tell us your prediction will cut in half. 100,000 Bitcoin by 2025. And uh, Ethereum to 5,000 by 2025. I think, can everybody get on board with that one? Cardano, I think it's going to do quite well. About five bucks. At least 350. The, the all-time high was 297, I think. Johnny, agree, small DCAN. <sighs> Beardy in the comments, constantly doing dad jokes. Bonjour from Africa, hello. Hey, let me ask you this, Cosmic. How's the electricity over there in Africa? You guys seeing a rapid rate in the price of electricity, oil, those types of things? I'm curious. Nope, haven't heard of that. Have you heard of Go Mining Token? If I don't know it, I don't talk about it. Again, super biased. Nah, I don't know. Another one, Roy. Nice mugshot. Let's assume it's 2023. 2023 January. Where's the crypto market standing as per your view? ADA and Bitcoin? ADA should be above a dollar. Bitcoin should be above 25,000. That's all I know. Should be. You know what? Let me show you something. You guys. Have you guys ever seen Ben's website? Into the Cryptoverse? It's really good. I'm going to show it to you when I pull up the right thing. Here it is. So what's great about Ben's website? Well, it's not free. It's, 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 it's a pay for but I got to tell you, it's got all the data that you could possibly want and then some. And if you take a look at, there's one called the Tettle Crypto Market Cap and Trend Line. It's an upper band and a lower band. So what does that mean? Well, what was the question? It's January 2023. Let's see where it potentially could be. Let's dream a little bit. So... January 2023. So the fair market value, just so you know, the red line is the fair market value, which we should be at 1.5 trillion. And actually over here, we should be at, oh shoot, 1.77 trillion. And uh, we are at a little less than that, 984. Hey, we, we broke uh, 1 trillion. We're at uh, 984 billion. That's a bummer. So just to Matt, just say it could go below the fair market value. It's just how it is, right? But if we extrapolate that out to, I believe it was January. You want right here? 
Well, the lower band, just so you know, is at 600 and this is January, 2023. Oops, sorry. So the lower band, that's pretty bad. Five. Oh, sorry, January, 2023, which would be over here. Genius. No, it's right here. January 23, the lower bands is 616 billion, which would be a reduction of 300 billion so far. Fair market value, 2 trillion. But as you can see right now, we're below that. So let's just say we just chop sideways. Eh, gosh, I don't know. 1.2 trillion, 1.3 trillion to be conservative. Hopefully it's not 612 billion, but it could. Just be, and here's the thing. Let's say it does go here. Let's say it does go here. January 23, it's, the market cap is 623 billion. Where is, where is Bitcoin at that price? About 14K, 13K, something like that. Would that be awful? I mean, for me, it wouldn't be. I'd be pretty damn excited. But then it's, that, that's why like sometimes these bad news, it's not bad news. Because again, if we pull these things out and just take a look at the bottom value, I mean, 2024, fair market value is 6 point, 2025, 6.2 trillion. Let's say we're, we're at 4 trillion. Would that be awful? Or 3 trillion? We'd be right back up to all-time highs. I mean, from beforehand. I know it would suck, but hey, if you could accumulate now a Bitcoin at 14,000, 15,000, you could accumulate Ethereum below $1,000, and you could accumulate Cardano below a dime. Are you kidding me? I'd do that all day long. So uh, that's the best thing I can give you, my man. But, and then also check out Ben's. Check out Ben's website. Links in the description. It's a good website. Thanks, man. Hope to have a beer with everybody someday. Never skip leg day. It's true. Mm. What's your conviction of the possible recession? I think we're in recession right now. Uh, how severe? Depends on uh, how aggressive the Fed really comes down to. It's crazy that uh, Jay Powell has so much power over the economy, but he sure does. So we'll see. And uh, like James from Invest Answers, he's right. You know, they really shouldn't be uh, raising it so aggressively. However, it's just they are doing that. And that's just how it is. And I think it's Jay Powell want to leave a legacy. He doesn't want to put it into a depression. I know that he knew what it was back in uh, with Volcker days. I know there's an argument against that, but I don't think he really cares so much about that. And I think, you know, the quantitative tightening is that this is the first time we're doing these things. We've, we've been money printing forever, right? But quantitative tightening, there's a lot of things that we're going to learn here for the next one, as opposed to what we knew prior to uh, this next recession. So maybe they get it right. Maybe they figure out a way to not look at data that's so retrospective and that is actually going on right now. And they can make the assumptions and their their moves at that point. They should really use trueflation.com. It's a pretty good website. And it's free. Good point. So Sweatcoin, just so you know, just kidding. Yeah, Sweatcoin's coming out. Hmm... Not your, oh, okay, Des is from Africa, I believe. Not yet, Rob, but food and gasoline's up. I can see that. Food, food for sure. You gone to the, the store lately? Yeah. Next bull will be driven by institutions. I believe that's true. If you, even if you look at the data from Coinbase, I think it's, uh, I want to say 66% is institutions and 33 roughly is uh, retail. And there's more of that. Just that institutions pay a lot less than us. Uh, rookie numbers and the likes. Ben is great. You're welcome. <laughs> Ben's website. Is there a link in the description? There's a link in the description. Just put that on auto, auto send. Yeah, you're right. Simon Gustafsson says this. What happens with Bitcoin when miners get stuck with 5 to 10x electricity costs? They're going to shut down. Mining difficulty is going to drop. And then places that have uh, cheap electricity, wherever the heck that is, are going to rule the roost for a while. Hmm, that's a great question. 
Robert, the second biggest producer of uranium. Guess who owns 90% of the mines? I'm going to say either China or China. Bitcoin is dumping. Really? Let's take a look. And I've been getting away. Hey, you what a timely video. It is dumping. Sweet Mary and Joseph. Look at that. Holy smokes, 19,000. Well, I guess the news is the news. And there you go. What's surprising to me is that Ethereum is still holding strong at $1,500, $1,600. Again, like I told you guys, and I, and I talked about this last Friday when I was in New York. The, where did it go? At MVRV score, it's, like I said, there was three, there was three lows or three big time lows. 2018, when it was below negative 0.4, uh, 2015 and 2011. And we think this is the lowest part, like I said. I don't. As a matter of fact, I think we can go down here. And if it, why am I even, hold on. This will make sense in a second. Hold on. So if you, there, there, that's easier. Let me show this to you. And I've, I've, we talked about this before. I don't want to scare anybody, but it is, it is the data. Data is the data. So the last all-time high in, in the first cycle, the first four-year cycle, 2012, 13, 14, 15, you have an all-time high of 1100 bucks, which is pretty good from like a five bucks. That's a massive run-up. Then it went down by 85% to $172. And then the next cycle, which was 2016 and 2019, you had almost 20,000 and then dropped to $3,200, 84%. And that's why, we're, that's why we're looking at those MVRV scores. And now with this one, the high was 67, the low has been 19,040, or maybe 17,5, depending on the data that you look at. So that's between 71 and 75%, which means I said, and I could be, hopefully I'm wrong, could be wrong just because it happened before, it means it's gonna happen again. That means that Bitcoin could go to 10K. And that's just looking at the cycles. But that doesn't mean it's gonna happen. It just means that that's what happened before. And that's all I'll say about that. But below 19,000, I wouldn't be surprised this week we go to 18,000. That's good for me. Uh, is it bad to go all in at 18,000? <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> ben is now smiling going, Grinch on If you don't watch Ben's, Ben's show, Into the Crypto it's great. His theory is that, um, that the Bitcoin dominance uh, should go up. All coins will bleed out. He sees 95% uh, going down. And we'll see. Remember, you know, Ben's not perfect either. So, but I'm sure he's very happy if the Bitcoin, if the Bitcoin dominance is going up. Simon Gustafson says, electricity costs is forcing miners to sell only the business. So trust me, Bitcoin will go lower. Probably so. It's a good point. I mean, it's what we, so it's what we were talking about before, you know. I mean, if Poolin, the fourth largest Bitcoin mining operation on the planet, uh, has liquidity issues like we talked about, what do you think is happening with the other ones? Well, hopefully they socked away for a rainy day. But uh, unfortunately, when you, go, when you get in those bull runs, and I'm guilty of this too, you start to think about, yeah, this could go up forever. I remember the big argument was, Rob, the people tell me, uh, the institutions are here to buoy the price of Bitcoin and crypto. And it'll never go down. It'll just be like small little peaks and valleys like in the traditional markets because institutions will never sell. And I was like, hold my beer because I guarantee they're going to sell. Tesla sold, a bunch of institutions sold. MicroStrategy didn't sell. That's true, but they don't. They can't. They can't uh, keep everything up forever. That's just how it is. Uh, <laughs> would Would you change your four year model if sudden catalyst happen and boost Bitcoin on K like combo ETF Fed pivot warranted? Yeah, and I'd be happy, and everybody'd be happy. And that's, see, Jay Young Chad, that's why I still dollar cost average. People say you shouldn't dollar cost average and wait till it goes lower and lower and lower. I don't know. I'm not a genius and no one knows exactly where we're going. So I'll just, 
you know, reduce my dollar cost averaging. And if it goes up, like uh, Mr. Chow here says, let's say an ETF gets approved. Let's say Gary, let's be honest. Let's say Gary gets fired and then they put him, you know, they put somebody in there, you know, and, uh, and then they approve it. And the Fed pivots and go, you know what? We're, we're just raising rates too hard. We take a look at the data, not the retroactive data or the retrospective and uh, looking good. And then, Maybe Ukraine and Russia come to a deal and they say, look, you can take this chunk of land, but you're not going to get this and let's have peace and go from there. Maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Robert, I haven't heard from you in a while. I'm very tempted to sell and see if I can rebuy here this month a lower price. You can do it. Uh, it's not my thing, but a lot of, I can see why people would want to do that because they hear me talking about Oh, it could go to 10K or go to 14K. But remember, I'm just a guy in his mom's basement with a really nice green screen talking to his computer to you people. How many times has this guy been wrong? Plenty. So don't think just because I said something, it's going to happen. It's all the 13 <laughs> Beardy got 52 steps in today, which means he walked back and forth in the refrigerator four times. That's pretty good. Beardy, those are rookie numbers. You got to get that up. Uh, Phantom comeback, perhaps. Hello, Azir. It's a nice beard. Have you heard of Wax? Wax protocol? Yeah, it's great. Stash is always talking about. Crypto Stash, always talking about how great it is. I've used it once or twice. Super cheap. Got a lot of... Uh, a lot of tread and a lot of big names behind it. Uh, big organizations. I think like, uh, not DC, but I think Marvel and a bunch of other different places could do really well. Always got a good point here. I think it's the last leverage shakeout before pumping for ETH merge. That's what a coincidence that you talked about that. Let me show you something. I was just looking at this and I wasn't going to bring it up because I didn't think it was relevant. That could be it. Uh, there's this website I'm, I use, and it's called CryptoQuant. And uh, let me show you the screen so you can see what I see. And there's six I always look at. Uh, Bitcoin miner outflow, which you can see that 2021, this green spike, that's a lot. Exchange reserve looks like Bitcoin, the reserves is, means they're taking, people are taking Bitcoin off the ex exchanges a little bit. Uh, exchange reserve for Ethereum, same thing. Take or buy volume. Of course, as uh, prices goes down, there's a lot of people buying up, even down here. But what I want to show you is the Bitcoin estimated leverage ratio. Let me blow that up. 